interviews are meant to be fun conversations, a question and answer session to obtain new information. But when it comes to hip hop, well, you mother effers know what time it is. Rap interviews just never go as planned. So before we hit play on this video, it's important we begin with the public service announcement. Never tell Charleston White what to say or what not to say. Now, roll the clip. So, Charleston White was on DJU's Go Crazy podcast, explaining why he gave money to Tuka's mom and FBG Duck's mom, Mama Duck, but not King Vaughn's mother. Charleston stated that he never knew about Vaughn's mom's situation and that when he heard about it, he didn't have enough money at the time to give her anything. I knew nothing of Tuka and FBG Duck until now. And when I heard about their mamas, when I heard about those kids, mamas, and how they were being treated, nigga, I show love. Even though I don't know nothing about King Vaughn Mama, y'all yeah. gonna show love to Vaughn Mama. I didn't have that chance. But nigga, the one that I had at my fingertips, when I first made a video, I first made a video saying, man, I heard about this kid Tuka. How the f y'all be saying that his mama? DJU told Charleston that most people in Chicago felt that if he was gonna do that for Mama Duck and Tuka's mom, then it's only right that he does it for other mothers who lost their sons to gang violence. But Charleston White wasn't having none of it. He told you that he doesn't need to do that. Then he gives Chi Town the middle finger and states that rather than them trying to tell him what not to do, they should just put their money where their mouth is. And I think um, with that part being said, the only thing that kind of like, I guess, bothers the Chicago community is like, if you go do that, you gotta do that for everybody. I ain't gotta do that. Y'all go do that's, it. That, that's the reason. So, but yeah, Chicago is mean, sucking my dick. Because how you gonna put that on me when y'all ain't even done a little what I done done? Okay, right. How you gonna dictate what I'm gonna do with my heart when you don't even have in your heart to do it? While most people would be wary about what they say concerning Chirac and King Vaughn, Charleston White really doesn't give a fuck. Charleston states that no one can make him care about Vaughn's mother. From the knowledge I got, King Vaughn was a killer. My mama had two sons locked up for murder, and my mama let everybody know I'm not in agreement in what my son's done. I ain't but look. So this is what I'm saying. You can't make me care about King Vaughn, my <laughs> that I don't give a about his mama. But fam, this isn't even the best part of the interview or the craziest shit Charleston White said during this podcast. Only Charleston White would say right in front of a camera, F them dead ninjas. But I don't give a damn about it. I helped, I listen, I helped this mama. Why do I need to know about two dead ass? I don't give a about duck or bone. I helped this living mama. them dead that preached about killing niggas. Give a they were. Why y'all not helping their mama? Charleston White then completely loses his shit when DJU tells him he can't use the F word when talking about Vaughn's mother. Why from Texas got to pay his mama car note? Why? And y'all want to tell me what I'm going to do with my money? Yeah, you want to do it because you want to do it. I didn't know. No, no, no. She you asked, asked me. No, 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 no. She asked me. You a goddamn lie. How I know I, that bitch need a car no pay? How the f I know she need a car no pay and she don't ask? You think I'm calling and asking do you need your car no pay? Right. Right. Nobody say I ain't going to say Come shit. on, homie. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. Not one of my homeboy mama y'all would never have to help in Texas. Yeah, I'm tired of helping. So I can say Whoever mama, and I kill a bitch behind me saying fuck they mama. I done helped them bitches. So somebody else helped them hold. And I ain't fuck now, bitch, and could have fucked the bitch. So y'all go help the bitch. Since y'all got so much to say, bitch, give me back the money then, ho. I ain't have to help now, one of you riding. My mama ain't got a bunch of kids that die. Bitch, y'all, you hoes, bury your baby. F*** y'all pain, bitch. Give me back my goddamn 
my money, ho. Or suck my d in Chicago. F y'all. F this interview then completely goes off the rails, and Charleston does something you would probably never see in any other interview. For those of you who are wondering why I gave the warning about not telling Charleston White what not to say, well, here's why. Remember, never F with Charleston White when he has a gun in his hand. After whipping out his strap, Charleston White eventually declares that the interview is over. And then to prove that he really doesn't give a F, he repeats exactly what DJ U asked him not to say. I don't give a all that yeah, say. Bro. You say what I want to say, man. Who told you that? Don't say, homie, interview over. Don't bother with you. Come on, bro. Interview over. He asked you about you. Say, but what could I grab in my mother? Ain't nobody coming to you violently. Ain't nobody coming to you violently, bro. You don't lie to me. I know what I'm hurting. However, Charleston White wouldn't be the only person to bring out his gun during an interview. In this next interview, this rapper actually cocks his gun and asks the interviewer if he wants to be gunned down right in front of the camera. Baby Los is a rapper who became quite popular after he began hanging out with the Island Boys. Some fans even believed he became an official member of the group because of how close they became. So, during this interview, Hoodrich Kevin asked Baby Los if he ever saw the Island Boy kiss or if he ever knew that the Island Boys were gay. Baby Los insisted that the Island Boys weren't gay when he was friends with them. So, Baby Los, I, I gotta ask you, bro, like, this is, everybody wants to know, did you see the Island Boys kiss? Bro, stop mentioning them dudes for real, bro, like, no, I'm just saying though, like, no, did you bro, see them no, do no, something together? Oh no, no, fam. Fam, they weren't gay when I was around, fam. Baby Los then stated that this interview wasn't meant to be about the Island Boys or what the Island Boys were doing. And at some point, Baby Los got so pissed about this question that he whips out his gun and threatens Hood Rich Kevin right in front of the camera. Hey, like, bro, stop doing that, bro. Like, this interview ain't about that. Like, it could go down in this interview, bro. Like, do you want it to go down in this interview? Do you want it to go down, yes or no? Nah, I'll feel you, bro. It's good, bro. It's good, bro. You feel me? However, while this interviewer was almost shot because of a question, this rapper was actually killed because of an interview in a picture that his ops deemed disrespectful. BTB Savage is an up-and-coming rapper from Cleveland. He was already buzzing on the local scene and had gathered some following in his city. And because of this, another rapper in the city was trying to get BTB Savage on his song. Savage stated that the rapper and his people had been hitting him up about the feature for a while, but he kept pushing it back. Shit, they was always hitting me up to do music and shit like that. So I was like, all right, bet. But on the night of the 3rd of February, 2023, Savage decided to do the feature. BTB Savage stated that he almost postponed the recording till the next day because it was too late, but he later decided to go with it, also because of the willingness of the other rapper to get the song done. I was going to do it at first. I wasn't going to do it at first, I mean, because it was so late. It was like damn near 10, 11. 
And I was talking to the girl I was with at the time. I'm like, shit, so I do this shit, I'll wait till tomorrow and just meet him at a real studio. Like, and then, but I, I ain't gonna lie, I just wanted the bread. I'm like, all right, bet. They gonna pull up. I'm gonna grab the bread real quick, dip out, and then go back to the uh, my other crib with my cousin in. So, um, shit, so last minute, I'm like, shit, just come on. They're like, we got our own studio equipment. Like, if I say something, they got something to respond to. They're like, oh, I, I don't got this. Oh, I got it. I got this. I got that. So I'm like, shit, pull up. Let's do the song real quick. The rapper pulled up to Savage's crib with a car full of a couple of dudes. This was the first red flag of the night, as they only need two people with Savage to get the song done. BTB Savage stated that he got pretty suspicious when the rapper started looking around his home in a lustful manner. We go inside the crib, and then they just talking and shit, like looking around. That's why I, I, I figured it was kind of weird they looking around when they first walk in my crib, like going like that and shit. Unfortunately, he didn't take long before Savage's suspicions were confirmed. There were two people that came into Savage's home, the rapper who wanted to do the feature and one of his homies called Omar Richardson. BTB Savage was with his girlfriend while his child was also asleep in one of the rooms. After some time, they noticed that one of the equipment they needed to record the song was left in the car. However, rather than Omar going to get the equipment, it was the rapper who stepped out to get the equipment. This made BTB quite suspicious, so he locked his door after the rapper stepped out. He was talking to me, the dude I'm talking to for the feature or whatever, he um talking to his uncle, like he like, oh, I ain't got this, I ain't got that. So his uncle said, go to the car and get more, like get, your, get the rest of the equipment or whatever. So I'm thinking like, damn, why would you, it should be the opposite way. You tell him to go, cause I'm, you, we like the ones we, we locked in, we talked or whatever about the song to do the song and you're gonna leave the random dude in my crib type shit so when he walked out i was kind of nervous so i locked the door and just where the bread at like, pay for this shit and got out my face for real so um while he talking he asked him about my chain he was like uh how much uh, what do you go to blah 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 how much you hit you for and i'm telling him like oh yeah i, I dropped the bag on this one da, 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 da. and then right as i'm talking i, I go down to um Look at like look at my piece while he's talking. I'm like, this one? I'm like, yeah, this one. While I'm looking down like that, that's when he upped the pole on me. And he like, oh yeah, run that. And he had a distance though. And I'm like, man, you got me fucked up. I ain't running shit. Even after Omar pulled a gun and threatened to shoot Savage and his girlfriend, he stood his ground and refused to give up his jewelry. BTB Savage eventually starts to give up his jewelry, and when the gunman came close enough and he saw an opening, grabbed the robber and stopped him from shooting. So when he come over, he uh he reached for the the chain and he took the gun off of me. Right there, I hit him with uh, like both of his arms under my armpit like this. And I, I like lean back like all the way back so his elbows lock up like that. So he holding the gun, he turn it and fire at the refrigerator. Savage and Omar then fall to the ground and start wrestling. Omar's gun fell out of his hand. And this is when Savage realizes an opportunity. He asks his girl to grab the gun and shoot the robber. I'm like, damn, come shoot him, bitch, come shoot him. I'm yelling at him, like, come shoot him, come shoot him. I don't know where she at. So I just keep tugging with him like that until I get rest of them shits out of her hand, out his hand. So then she run over there. She got damn shaking and shit. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, shoot him, shoot him. So like, well, I, I edge, I swing my hip under him like that to put him on top of me, all the way on top of me. And then she's popping him in the back twice. Like she's like, but fam, it was after he was shot that Omar became even more dangerous. Savage stated that Omar had a huge adrenaline rush and started scrambling with him even harder. And at some point, he had the upper hand and managed to whip out two more guns. Although he was still held by Savage, Omar shoots at Savage's girlfriend, but she manages to run out of the way just in time. Omar then calls for backup. He shouts at his homies to shoot and break through the door. Omar's homeboys shoot at the door, so Savage knew he had to be proactive. It's go time, and this is the crucial part of the fight. On top of him. So then um, she fought, they fired two times through the door. I'm like, slide it, slide the gun. And he like kind of right by the edge of the, it's like an island in the middle. He kind of by the edge of the island. So it's like she can't go around there and grab that gun or slide the gun. Cause I'm I'm under like where his waistline is, grabbing all that. He's trying to push me down, and I just keep calling up him and grabbing him, but laying on the ground and keeping my head down. So while they firing through the door, 
They fired twice. I'm like, slide me the gun, slide me the gun. She's like, they shooting through the door. Like, she don't want to run over there. And I, I don't blame her. It's her first time, like, even shooting a gun or shooting somebody. But I, I, I probably said, like, 20 rounds just go off through my door. Boom, 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 boom. Back to back to back to back to back, to back nonstop. Like, that shit would not stop me. I'm like, all right, bet. So, boom, I'm, I'm still stacking down. And I tell her to shoot through the door. I'm like, shoot through the door. Fuck it, then. You don't want to slide me the gun. Blow that bitch through the door, then. So she shoot through the door twice. She like, boom, boom, and shoot through the door. And then uh, they left him. They left him. Like. After hearing the multiple gunshots that came at the door, Omar's homeboys wasted no time and just left him. Savage then begins punching the robber and tells his girl to come shoot him again. However, this time, unfortunately, the bullets hit Savage himself in the elbow. The girl eventually shoots the robber. Savage then takes her to grab her son so they can start leaving. I'm like, I'm like go grab my son and get your shit and let's fucking go like that. And I'm like, let's get the fuck up out of here. Let's dip, let's dip. Savage decides to then give the robber, Omar, a chance to still leave the building. But although he was bleeding to death, Omar Richardson rejects the opportunity to leave and save his own life. Instead, he insists that he was still going to rob and leave the place with Holding something. down like tight like that. I'm like, watch out, bro. Watch the fuck out. What are you doing, bro? Get the fuck up out of here. Just go now like that. And then he was like, no, nah, I'm leaving here with something. I'm leaving here with something. Savage empties the clip of the last gun. So Omar now has no means of harming him or his family. As Savage and his family start leaving, Omar starts begging him to take him along and drop him at the hospital. But bear in mind that a few seconds ago, this man still wanted to harm BTB Savage, his girl and his son. He didn't start begging for his life until it was obvious he didn't have any other option. Like while I walked by, he grabbed my foot. He like, he like, come on, bro, take me with you, bro. I, just, I can make it to the hospital. I just need to go to the hospital. I went, nigga, fuck you. Like, I ain't taking you no fucking hospital, boy. Your ass about to fry right here. And if they come save you, then they come save you. If not, then your ass toasty. You are gone. Last day. Savage and his family make it out of the place alive. About a month after this incident, BTB Savage then did the interview with DJ Vlad, talking about the shooting. This interview quickly went viral and got a lot of people talking. Savage then posts a picture of himself standing at the spot where Omar was bleeding out, and you even see the dried blood in the picture. However, word on the street is that Omar's homeboys found the interview and this picture quite disrespectful. Unfortunately, a couple of hours after he posted this picture, BTB Savage was shot dead in his car. New tonight at 10, the man gunned down in River Oaks last night has now been identified. Daryl Gentry was killed in a hail of gunfire on a mid lane near San Felipe. That's according to the medical examiner's office. All night, we've been working to verify reports the victim is a rapper who goes by BTB Savage. Many believe that the picture and the interview was eventually what got BTB Savage killed. And in this No Jumper interview, rather than answer questions, these two rappers decided to let their fists do the talking. This interview happened in November 2022. California rapper Lil Kelpie and another rapper, Almighty Suspect, were both guests on the No Jumper podcast. During the interview, Adam22 asked Kelpie about the interview he did with another YouTube channel, Soft White Underbelly. You see, Kelpie is not just a rapper, he is also a pimp. However, Almighty Suspect wasn't happy with the fact that Lil Kelpie was dressed as a Party City pimp in that interview. Kelpie stated that he just did it to get attention, but Suspect insisted that Kelpie's outfit was as offensive as a white person painting their face black. Like, fill me in on that. Like, is there is there something expected of you before you've earned the stripes to wear certain types of like pimp outfits? Nah, it wasn't even that. It was like. We felt like that shit, like the equivalent for, to, to to get everybody to understand, kind of like kind of like blackface. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was kind of like like it looked like a costume. After this, the interview went from zero to 100 real quick. Almighty Suspect and Lil Kelpie started arguing and going at each other. Suspect then starts to lose his shit. He calls Kelpie a clown and states that he is not who he says he is. Really, I brought two. I mean, I ain't never seen none of your me. So he got some work on the couch. None right. Of your right. None right. of your bitches. Because I'm really doing this shit. What the fuck I look like bringing some really? here? Really? You're a clown. You're going to get life for this shit. You're going to get life for playing around. So I'm really doing this shit. What the fuck I look like bringing some prostitutes in here? Stop 
He gets a through at them we for this money? shit. We get money? This you a fucking this clown. This clown in there You're person that one Almighty Suspect then states that Kelpie is a nobody who is just looking for some clout. <laughs> Niggas better really know. It. I'm on tracks, boy. F*** out of here. I ain't no Who are you? I'm Lil who Kelpie. Who are you? Kelpie no one knows pimp. you. Kelpie the mother <laughs> <laughs> be the clown. Fuck you ain't gotta here. know who I am. The interview then turns into somewhat of a UFC weigh-in from here, with both rappers screaming and insulting each other. The only difference is that a beatdown actually happens during this interview. Lil Kelpie calls Almighty Suspect a bitch, and this is when Suspect decides to let his fists do the talking. Suspect spits at Kelpie, and then starts raining punches on him. Who knows who the who? fuck I am? I'm you getting said money what? every day. I said you Ben said... Franklin knows who the I am, bitch. Who you calling a bitch, Franklin, I'm calling you a bitch. Oh, Lil Kelpie left the studio with a bloodied eye on this day. But unlike Kelpie, some rappers don't even get the luxury of just having a bloodied eye. Everybody knows NBA Youngboy and G Money have a very long history. The duo were actually friends. G Money was like a brother to Youngboy and they were both signed to the same label, TBG. G-Money stated that at some point, Youngboy actually used to live with him, and he even saw him as a younger brother. And this was the period before they both became stars. However, they started having problems after Youngboy left TBG. They went from being label mates and friends to becoming rivals, and after some time, this became a serious beef and gang war in Baton Rouge. Then, in an interview with Assay Cheese, G Money revealed that he was once intimate with Young Boy's sister. Not really. He met he met about his sister too, though. About his sister? Yeah, I had fucked her a long time ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he met about mean. that. He was he wasn't really tripping on it back then, though. You know what I'm saying? He be calling me Big Brother and shit. You hear me? I guess he just let that fame and shit get to his head. Now he feel like he just this new. Many believe that the little snippet you just saw is actually what got G Money killed. This won't be the only time G Money spoke about spending time with Young Boy's sister. He also mentioned this on an IG live stream. And on the 10th of September 2017, G Money was shot at a parking lot outside a studio where he had reportedly just finished recording a diss song aimed at Young Boy. NBA Youngboy supposedly confirmed that the interview was responsible for G Money's death on the song Poor Ones, as he rapped, Matter of fact, Nick, I used to call you my big brother. Then you did some foul shit and had sex with my sister, then threw it in my face in front of the people on Insta. Another rapper who is connected to NBA Youngboy is rapper Lil Dump. Lil Dump's interview on the No Jumper podcast is one of the most bizarre interviews you would ever see. While Adam22 was asking a question, Lil Dump began throwing up right on camera. So you saw a lot of shit going on from a very young age? Growing up, yeah. Anything in particular stand out? Adam22 tried to get Lil Dump to talk about what happened, but he simply stated that it was something deep that he wasn't comfortable talking about in front of the camera. So what just happened? Hmm? What just happened? For something deep in life that, you know, I'd rather not talk about it, but Do you think I, I can talk to you about it personally as a person, you know what I'm saying? But some, you know, things deep in life. But I'm just talking about you puking or like the fact that you're kind of drunk, right? No, I ain't drunk. I'm sober. You're sober? No alcohol. That's not what's in that cup. I just kind of assumed it was alcohol. Water. Oh, okay. So what are you going through right now? Just some, some, some deep things. You trying to get clean? Hmm? You trying to get clean? Get clean. Off of some other shit? Yeah, type shit. At the same time, but... What is it, perks? Mm. 
If I'm trying to get clean, I mean, nothing. Right. Not at the moment, nothing. So what do you think made you puke? I talked to you about it. But nothing. Lil Dump was clearly dealing with some serious personal issues, but probably never had anyone to share it with. Instead, Lil Dump is addicted to drugs and uses it to numb himself to the issues he was battling. And during his 20 Woman vs. 1 rapper segment with Hood Rich Kevin, Lil Dump actually told one of the girls that he does more drugs than she could ever imagine. How you doing? How you okay, doing? hold on, because let me let them be quiet first. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing good. What's your name? Jayla, why, why are you standing like that? Like, stand up, shit. You gotta be louder, like. I do more drugs than me you too. Could ever imagine. That's not okay. I know. What you do besides rap? You just rap and do drugs? I make money. That's it? How old are you? 21. Oh, okay. How old are you? I'm 22. What's your name again? Jay La. Jay La. Yeah. You ratchet? Do I look ratchet? You act Damn ratchet, man. like your attitude. Why you act like that? How do I act? You the one that's over here like this. But you the crazy one. I did drugs. But I'm right to you. Can go. Yeah. Cause baby, you ain't my type. You feel me? Man, that was distasteful, man. Like, what was the we was talking what like kind of that, conversation like, were you having before he told you to go take this photo? Fuck me, fuck him. Go go over there and do that and see what happened to you. I'm like, I'm outside right now. You hit him up? Yeah. Yeah. And he he was just and like, he hey, what's up? Why, why, yeah. the, the Chicago's so weird because the ops always be talking to each other and like going on live and tweeting at each other and shit. <laughs> FBG Cash stated that he only spent a minute at the location of the mural because he knew the picture was very risky. I tired Dark uh, stop sneak this me before he left me on scene. Really? So you kept barking on him? No, I just left it. I just he left me on scene. I just left it alone in the DM. Right. I, sometimes I don't know if I believe. Sometimes I feel like you're trolling me, but I could see it. I guess. Sometimes shit happens. It's good for the feel some way. Sometimes, but I ain't trolling. How long were you actually at the mural? Uh, about like not even a minute. Okay, you just yeah. popped out and did it. Yeah, and like it wasn't my intention. Like I'm finna go. Like I was in the car with my uh, with somebody, and I'm like, why the fuck you taking me down this way anyway? Like, why matter of fact, pull over. You know what I'm saying like I needed that because like it was it was on. Like you had already started. I was like, damn, it was risky, but like, hey, that's the play I made. You know what I'm saying? I posted. Lil Dirk then talked about Cash taking the picture in front of Vaughn's mural on his song Computer Murderers. Dirk rapped, sneaking pics by Vaughn's mural like Lil Bro won't come out and spin. And just about three months after the song was released, FBG Cash was unfortunately shot and killed in a drive-by shooting in Southside Chicago. A Southside rapper was killed this morning after a gunman armed with a rifle opened fire on his car. 31-year-old Tristan Hamilton performed under the name FBG Cash. Police say he was driving near 81st and Ashland when the shooting occurred. A 29-year-old woman who was asleep in the car was seriously However, if you know anything about this gang war between Oblock and Tukaville, then you will know FBG Cash isn't the only victim of this war. In fact, in another interview, another member of Flyboy Gang, FBG Butter, revealed that O Block members actually told on themselves after taking down FBG's most popular member, FBG Duck. Butter revealed that an O Block member, Muop, actually took a picture with a gun that was allegedly used for murder. Muop bullet. Damn. His skitches neck right. Damn. Was in the wall. Zia bullet. Hit his hand, he dropped his blick. Mm. These niggas told him they so. And they did an interview on top of the fucking murder cop. You stupid fucks. What Hello. about what about the picture that take went? Take me to jail. Give me so, the cups. Yo, butter. What I'll about the what about the picture that went viral with Muwap wearing the with the duck sneakers? That's clown shit. If with the same drinker you y'all use. Uh get a fish day evidence. That's the same. Uh Homicide can't solve it, but the feds can, right? Damn. We talking uh, real business. I'm a real street nigga. Nah. Just a few seconds, many believe Butter actually snitched on himself as he painted an exact picture of a murder he allegedly committed. Butter was saying too much that his man, FYBJ Maine, had to tell him to stop talking. 
Sit I'm down, butter shine. You too much. Shut the fuck Son, up. Son, I'm butter shine. Shut the fuck up. You saying Now, picture me sitting on top of a fucking car that I just shut killed the fuck OD up. on. I got Jay Main them in this shut bitch, the fuck too. Up. I got four them in this bitch. They in this bitch. They killed the nigga. I just got some attention. FBG Butter was actually talking about the murder of OD Perry. Odie Perry was one of the first persons who was killed in the way between FBG and Oblock. Before this interview, most fans believed that Butter's sister, K.I., was responsible for Odie Perry's death, especially because Butter had once said on the stand and in an interview with DJ Vlad that K.I. was the one who killed Odie Perry. Well, the story goes that she killed someone at 14 as revenge over Tuca. That's what they say. Man, OD got his shit splat. Right, well, Odie Perry got killed at one point. Sharad, and they're saying that- Baton, Julia. They're saying that she was a shooter. That's the rumor. I mean, it's it's footage. It's actually, it's a, it's a, it's a video. Of Odie Perry getting killed? Yeah, he Hell yeah. And you saw it? I ain't seen nothing, man. I just heard the stories, bro. Okay. I just be hearing shit, man. I be hearing through the great band, like his shit. I don't be knowing nothing for real. However, Butter then snitched on himself in another interview and revealed that he pinned Odie's death on his sister because she had already passed away. He told him he was slacking they homies. Oh, look where I, I just gave back 192 years. I don't speak on that. Told him, Dad. I'm going right now because I'm waiting on my sister's title. Told him, oh.